this wonderful glowing painting is the artist it's a self-portrait of the artist rembrandt rembrandt a 17th century dutch artist in his studio and he's stepping back from the painting on the easel something that artists have to do he's been creating close up with his brush against the surface an image but now he steps back to understand what he's done to look at it to gain perspective that's what i want to do for us right now if we look back at the very first assignment that asked you to build your most fundamental skills it was sensory investigation and you wanted to be learning to do three things one was to use your senses consciously so that you are tuning into the visual and physical evidence of an artwork that's one of the most important things we have in art history so visual and physical evidence pays attention to how big is this canvas and how big is the space occupied by the easel compared to the overall space and the proportions of that looming immense easel to this rather short fellow mr rembrandt the color the way the light is pouring in all of that is not just something to enjoy although it is something to enjoy it's also evidence it's evidence of the artistic choices that we can see Rembrandt made, and we can make inferences about his intentions, about meaning. The choice to have this wall so meticulously painted with the cracks, the texture of the cracks, the, the wood underneath the plaster, the crumbling plaster, so that you could feel like you can almost touch it. The choice to have the painting turned so that we can't see what he's seeing and the choice to have him in these kind of subtle blue robes rather regal looking um, in this plain space and so we are paying attention to the evidence of artistic choices that become meaningful we're also learning through our senses to do very close reading which means to be examining every single element thoughtfully and carefully trying not to take anything for granted whether it's the texture of the floorboards or the way the feet are placed the kind of boots he's wearing this idea of close reading is what we started with in learning to look right so close reading is a metaphor that you are reading the artwork but you look what you're doing is you're looking with the utmost depth of attention that's why we did the exercise in sensory investigation because you want to be able to pay such close attention since this is your visual evidence and in the game you played as an alien from another planet you were looking at the visual evidence that's sight, that sound, that smell, that's touch, that's taste, and it resulted in really universally among all students strong writing. Look at this example of exceptionally strong writing. The circular discs overlap, varying in color from golden to white with a bit of ochre. Little dark dots of brown peek out of the glossy surface matching the parts of the edges that have crisped the writing is superb because it is very closely rooted in visual and physical facts it's incredibly specific about those facts golden to white with a bit of ochre very precise those are the laws of good writing whatever subject matter you're studying precision specificity rooted in clear evidence it makes a very subtle squishy sound as I pinch it between my fingers. It makes the same sound if you rub it. If I dropped, it would splat on the floor. So this kind of care in paying attention to every facet of the food object leads to writing that is rich because it considers all the facets. And that leads to then, when it comes to art, a deep understanding of all the facets that create the meaning. Imagine if that same writer about that, who had worked with that food were talking about this painting and really enumerating the kind of golden pale brown with the warmer 
oak colored brown with the shadowy elements and then the pale creamy plaster or deals with the space the kind of big open space with a shadow that gets paler and paler so that then you see the light this this rim of light glowing off the side of the painting and then the face is also in shadow but there's a little hint of light as if there's a relationship between the face and the side of the painting this is how you build a strong interpretation so that's what you've been working on i'm summing up here to remember keep doing that keep thinking about these skills these ways of responding to artworks using language